And hello, Amiga fans. This is Jack from Austin, Texas, coming at you again with another tutorial. Yes, I know. It's been a little while since I've done a tutorial. I apologize wholeheartedly for that. I have been a little bit on the busy side. Um, I just recently launched a YouTube channel, another YouTube channel called Pints and Amiga. It's a gaming channel doing uh, classic Amiga gaming. And me and my son do that together. And setting up all of that and getting that channel launched was a chore within itself. And it took my attention away from some of these tutorials that I've been doing for y'all. Well, I'm back. And this tutorial is actually per a request. This tutorial um, is going to be about setting up WHD load to make it compatible with all of these classic games and setting up a system that you will be able to play a game without it running too fast. Uh, that's the thing when you when you anybody that gets into WHD load wants to set up the biggest and Billy bad to the bone uh, biggest system that they can possibly make and push the emulation as far as they can well they lose in the aspect of game compatibility because the more you soup up your win UAE emulation the less you're compatible with older programs and stuff like that so in this tutorial we're going to create a system we're going to create a a1200 AGA with an 020 running at 14 megahertz that will make you almost completely compatible with majority if not almost all of the games that are out there even backwards compatible now there's going to be some games out there that uh, are are a500 specific are all the way back to the 1000 that are going to call that want to call directly to a 68000 CPU or 6810 um we're going to address that in the video. So uh, we're going to dig right in. Um, for anybody that's just coming on board and watching this video, I am going to be doing this with you already familiar with WinUA. If you're not familiar with WinUA, please back up and go watch my very first video. It explains WinUA very basic and straightforward and all the options and explain some of the options and all of these little extra menus so we're gonna dive right in and we're gonna create a system and then we're gonna install WHD load with iGame then we're gonna tweak WHD load then we're gonna play a few games and show you how the system and some of the things that uh, I've I can do in there or you now will be able to do to um, make it speed friendly and and make your make your classic Amiga game experience um, not going 90 miles an hour. So here we go. The first thing I want you to do is open up your WinUAE. Now, if you're not aware, WinUAE just recently dropped a new version. It is now 4.1.0. And I have, it was 12-5 uh, of 2018. This is a 64-bit version. So we're going to be using that version. Um, if you don't, by all means, up, update. Uh, if you like the version that you currently have, not much has changed as far as looks. So you should be fine in setting up the exact same thing. So let's go to Quick Start. All right, click on the Quick quick Start uh, tab, or the the quick start section there and if it's not selected already I want you to select an A1200 okay basic no expand expanded configurations none best compatibility if that slider is over here put it all the way over there to the left make it all the way on best compatibility leave that there leave everything else right there where it is I want you to hit the set configuration okay now, I want you to go down here to the CPU tab and FPU. Make sure that 68020 is set. 
Make sure approximately A500, A1200 are cycle exact. Usually you would click fast as possible. I don't want you in this. I want you to leave that right there where it's at. Leave that CPU at plus zero. That's dead center for it. That's zero percent. No less, no more. Cycles exact CPU emulation speed. Make sure this is set to 4x and not anything else. If you do it, it change the frequency of the CPU. It is at 14.18 megahertz. This is the exact speed for a PAL A1200. Okay, 24-bit addressing. Leave that check mark. No MMU because the original 68020 did not have an MMU. FPU none. We need none of this extra just-in-time settings. We want this as close to as original as we can get. <clears throat> chipset, AGA, advanced chipset, compatible settings. Leave that right there where it's at. ROM. Okay, we need to change the ROM because in this install, we're going to use the new latest greatest Workbench 3.1.4. It's brand new. If you not know about it, please go to Hyperion's website and check it out. Uh, links will be in the descriptions. By all means, purchase that. Support the Amiga community by showing Hyperion that we support them so they will continue giving us operating systems for the classic 68000 series processor Amigas. Now, Three, you're probably asking 314. Well, I have 39. 314 is the latest operating system that took place after the original operating system from Commodore 3.1 3 was the last one that was natively on floppy disk that was for the original hardware. Later on, after Commodore's demise and everything, you had 3.9 by another company, and then of course sequentially you had, you know, 4.0 for PPCs and 4.1 and 4.1 Final Edition and then 4.1 Classic. You got to have a power PPC. This is on stock native hardware. Yes, 3.9 is cool. If you want to use 3.9, go go right ahead. But in this in this tutorial, we're using the latest and greatest. 3.1.4 so I have already purchased it and downloaded and I'm gonna click on the little three little tick marks and I'm gonna go where my kickstart is now my directory defaults to where I keep all of my other kickstarts so I need to go where I have those kickstarts located at which is I keep it in my uh, Amiga OS pack directory and this is where I have my um, OS um, 314 A1200 and my 4000. <clears throat> my physical 4000, my real Amiga 4000, does run OS 314 ROMs, and so does my 3000, and soon to be my 2000. And every machine I have is going to have OS uh, 314 ROMs on it, and um, it will be able to boot 314 also. So, I created a backup directory for this uh, purposes uh, so I can use if anything happens uh, I do not destroy my originals so I'm gonna go into there now when you download this and you purchase this you will get ADF files which is your basically your floppies if you have a real an Amiga you can you can burn these two floppies with program and or you can also burn the ROMs to kickstart ROMs, physical ROMs, if you know how to burn them or you have somebody that uh, knows how to burn them and if you can, if you want to purchase blank ones, you can do it yourself. But anyway, that's for something else. We're doing WinUE and in that download, they give you real ROMs to burn and they give you emulation ROMs. So here is the uh, WinUE, here's the soft, the kickstart ROM for WinUE uh, 46143, which is the latest greatest ROM for 3.14. Click on that. Then we're going to go down to RAM. 
and we need two mega chip because the A1200 stock come with two mega chip and we're gonna put the fast at eight megs of fast all right we're not gonna add any expansion boards or anything like that we're gonna leave it as close to stock as you can do floppy drives we don't need to do anything there hard drives we'll get to that here in a minute we don't need to worry about that we don't need to worry about much of anything now display it's your preference on what your screen size is uh, for this tutorial I like to do 1280 by 720 the recording software is a little more friendlier with that and my caption cards a little friendlier plus I like to put the Amiga on full screen I like to see my whole screen not a little window with the Amiga sitting on the desktop and I can't stand that I want to I want my full experience so I will make sure all of that is good to go and we can click through here there's nothing in here that you really need we need to go down to miscellaneous miscellaneous I want you to use control F11 to quit select that I want you to click on allow native code select that and that is that looks to be about it okay now once you do that go back up to configuration I want you to save as and let's make it a 1200 just put in a 1200 or whatever you want to name it it's up to you okay there it is right there highlight it hit load double check the settings make sure everything looks good that everything that you had is still there just a little check make sure my ROM still there make sure my RAM still set everything's good we're gonna to get to the hard drive in a little bit make sure everything I set is all still there now for a test to make sure our kickstart ROM that you download if you want to use 314 you have to go purchase it I highly suggest uh, I suggest that you go purchase it uh, if you're using if you want to do these exact same steps but with 3.1 and you have uh, three OS 31 sitting around on uh, ADFs uh, by all means you can do the exact same steps okay now let's start it and we should see the kickstart logo here in just a second there it is see 314 kickstart version 46143 copyright 2018 Hyperion Entertainment. They've got a nice little Boeing ball up there now. All rights reserved. So we're on a track now. We've got a machine built. We know it's kickstarting and it's waiting to boot. So we're going to F12 out of here. And we are going to quit when you ain't. Okay. Now I want you to open it back up. Once you open it back up, you will see your 1200 probably sitting at top or wherever you've got it in your um, list here. Highlight it, hit load. Let's make sure our hardware and stuff is correct. Now, I want you to go down to CD and hard drives. We need to create a hard drive. So we're gonna create a hard file, okay? And we don't need a very, very big one so uh how about one gig okay if you want to create bigger that's that's entirely up to you so let's go uh one gig so that's 1000 megabytes all right change the hard drive controller from uae we want to make this as original as we can commodore a600 a1200 and there we go okay hit create and we need to give it a name so we're going to call it a1200 hdd We're going to hit save. We're going to hit OK. Then I want you to go back up, highlight it, then double click on it. And I want you to click on full drive rigid disk block mode. OK. And hit OK. Once you have done that, go back up to configuration, 
highlight your 81200 and I want you to hit save. Okay? Then I want you to go to your floppy drive and wherever you downloaded your OS314 pack for the system that you're emulating okay preferably if you wanted to do what what this tutorial is intending to do needs to be for the 1200 okay wherever you downloaded it at and you unzipped it you're gonna have all of these ADFs for your OS 314 so we need to click on the install ADF and then we're gonna hit start And give it a few seconds for it to come up. Remember, we are emulating 14 megahertz. And there we go. So we have it. We have the install. You won't see any hard drives yet because that hard drive is still raw. So double click on the install. Click on hard drive toolbox. Click on hard drive tool box. It's going to read the SCSI bus. Drives have been added or removed from the system. It needs to record on some other drive in the system. These drives will be marked as changed. Or, sure. Okay. We need to change drive type. Let's delete some of these old ones that I have in here. You might not have any off in there. If you're first time in installing, you won't have any of these. So we're going to assume that that this is what you see right here. So let's define new, read the configuration, and there it is. 1000 megs, 1 gig, A1200 HD. Hit OK. Hit OK. Yep, sure I want to continue. If it pops up, if yours doesn't, that's fine. Okay, there's our hard drive. We need to save change to the drive, partition the drive, and we're going to leave it default. There's really no reason to change this. In Workbench 314, or Amiga OS 314, you have a couple of new options in Hard Drive Toolbox. You got advanced options, and you got direct SCSI transfer, um, so things move a little bit faster. Let's leave this at UDH zero and let's check direct SCSI transfer and leave that one at UDH one and just basically split it in half be fine if you want to partition in another way you go right ahead it's not gonna hurt just make sure that the very first one is bootable and it's some kind of zero in the end you can name it anything you want DH zero SH zero whatever whatever you want as long as it has a zero and then the second partition and any partition pertaining after that has a number that doesn't conflict with any of the other partitions. So hit OK. Save changes to the drive. And it's going to destroy the following information. Sure. It's a brand new drive. A reboot, a reboot is required. We're going to reboot. and give it a few seconds for it to come up okay now you should see 
two unallocated hard drives right there. Now this one we are going to format and we're going to call it workbench. You can leave a trash can if you want to. I prefer, usually prefer not to. It doesn't matter. It's your, your choice. If you want to go directory cache and long names, that's your choice. We're just going to, for this tr uh, tutorial, we're just going to leave it stock. We're going to do a quick format. It. If you do a long format, you click on it by accident, you might as well go have dinner and a beer. Because it's going to take a while. Okay, there's my workbench right there, completed. And we're going to name this one. We're going to format this one. We're going to call it work. We do a quick format on it also. And there it is. Okay. So let's do a quick uh, reboot. Control Amiga Amiga, aka Control Windows Keys, Windows Keys. If you're watching this video for the first time and you do not have a Windows keyboard with two Windows keys, sucks to be you. Uh, you'll need a keyboard with uh, two Windows keys to make your life a lot easier. Okay, so Control Amiga Amiga, let's reset this. Give it a few seconds to come back. And here we go. We are back. Sorry about that. Okay, now, before we get to going any further, I want you to hit F12. Once you hit F12, I want you to come down here. Now, we're still where we have the floppies at, where we uh, installed that, where we mounted that first floppy. I want you to come down here to floppy drive emulation speed, and I want you to put that on turbo. Okay? Move that to turbo, hit OK. Alright, you're back on your Mega desktop. Go ahead and click, double click on the install icon, the install drawer for 314, and hit the language that coincides with your particular language. Mine is English. And here we go. We are going to be installing Mega OS 314. Install. Yes. Proceed with the install. English is checked. Checking for workbench for obsolete files. Please insert the workbench disk version 314 in any floppy. F12. And hit the three little tick marks and select the workbench floppy and hit OK. It will automatically start the install as soon as you flip back over and away it goes. Now if we were doing it at 100 percent traditional speed we would be here for the basically the original speed of a floppy. <laughs> We'd be here for a while. Okay, insert local or locale, however you want to pronounce that. I call it locals, local, F12. And we're going to mount locale. Hit OK. And extras, we need Amiga extras, that's the next one.
Okay, insert Amiga fonts, F12. Mega storage. And flip back. Okay, insert the Amiga install disk again. We are almost done. Install disk. Hit OK. All right, installation of release 314 is now complete. To enable, you must reboot your machine, remove the Amiga install disk from the floppy drive, and select proceed. So hit F12 again. And we're going to hit eject. Hit OK. Proceed. The Amiga is going to reboot. And it's going to take it a couple of seconds to come back. And there we go. We have an Amiga Workbench now. 314. Brand new. Copyright 2018 Hyperion Entertainment. We will get away from that we will do the backdrop and do the windows snapshot windows snapshot all to save that we want it just like that we hit about and there we go workbench 45194 and kickstart 46143 copyright 2018 Hyperion all right we are good to go now I want you to Dump out of the emulation, so control F11. Okay. And I want you to start your WinUA again. This time, after you mount the A1200, so let's highlight the A1200, load it. Once you get through loading it, I want you to go down to the hard drive and floppy devices. And I want you to click on Add PC Drives at Startup. You can include the removables if you want to, or include network drives if you want to. That's fine. CDFS for CD support. Check mark that. Go back up to configuration. Highlight that. Hit Save. Then you can hit Load again so we can make sure they stuck. Yes, they stuck. And then we need to hit Start. This is so we can reach all of the PC drives where we've downloaded software to that we want to easily install on the Amiga side. All of the software and all of the tools and everything that I'm telling you in this tutorial is going to be, there is going to be links in the description. So by all means, watch the video and then go collect all of your software. Put it in an area, put it all in a folder or a drawer that you can get to from the Amiga readily on the PC side by check marking those share PC drives and networks and removable storage. See I have my that's my Windows drive right there that's my uh, Windows 10 drive right there and then there's my Banana Man which is my storage for my PC that's what I call it you might call yours something else but that's my four terabyte storage mostly has Amiga stuff on it okay then the Amiga's work, and then the workbench is right here. So here we go. Yes, it looks real 3.1-ish. Uh, there's things you can do later on, you can read up on, that you can make the icons. Uh, there's an icon package that is in workbench 1.3. Um, you can watch the video of uh, 
10 minute um, retro Amiga uh, videos. Doug, he makes some awesome videos. You can find him on uh, uh, YouTube. So let's dive right in. We've got 314 installed. Now it's time for installing WHD Load, MUI, iGames, some games, doing some system tweaks to make them run at the speed that they're supposed to and play some games. So here we go. Wherever you downloaded all of those files to, I created a directory that I downloaded all of my files to, and I called them w, uh, WHD load stuff. Okay. The first thing we need to do, because Workbench 3.1.4 does not come with LHA because we need to unarchive some things. So we need a LHA utility. If you go on AmyNet and look up LHA.run, you will find this archive, you will download it, and it just runs and in and extracts different versions of LHAs according to your CPU. Just double click on it and run it. Let's update and find the one that pertains to our CPU. Since this is an A1200, we need 68020. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to rename this file. So let's rename it. We need to leave it LHA. Ah, object already exists. So I already have it in here. Some uh, already have it in here once already. So this is the same one. Uh, I just haven't deleted that one yet. So I'm going to delete that one so you can see what I'm actually doing here. So after the file extracts, you will have LHA. Look for LHA underscore 68020. And let's rename that. Okay. Open up your workbench. Do a show all. And navigate to your C directory. Open up your C directory, pull it off to the side, and grab that LHA and drop it in there. We need that right there. Now, we need to move some files that you will download from the description into the work drive of the A1200 that we created. Okay, You need to download this MU68000X libs. I'm going to drag that over to work. Okay, We need the MUI 3.8 I mean, th uh, user, which is also on AmyNet. You'll need to download that. We're going to drop that into work. Okay. We will need to download, you will need to go to the iGame site, links in the description, and download iGame. I'm going to drop that right there. You will also need the GUI graphics render no FPU LHA that is on the iGame website, a link to it, and it's also on AmyNet. The link will be in the description. And we'll drop that in there. Then we also need WHD load. You can go to the WHD load website and download the latest 18.3 version. Uh, AmyNet only has the 16.5, 16.7 version. It only has the 16 version. So go to their website. Uh, a link will be in the description and download the 18.3. Okay. That right there is going to get us started okay don't worry about anything else I'll explain those later so the first things that we need to do is go to work do a show all so we can see all of those hidden files we just dropped in there and the first one that we need to do is MUI because this program iGame needs MUI so double click on MUI 
and you'll get a com you'll get it popped up there in the command and I want you to type in L H A X and hit enter and what that will do is extract that archive right there it'll create a folder that movies in and it would take uh, a minute or so for it to in extract remember we're we're emulating a 14.8 megahertz 020 CPU Okay, operation successful. That's good. Everything was extracted correctly. Okay, now we need to go to this MU68000X library and we will need to LHA extract that, LHAX space, and leave the name behind there and just hit enter and we'll, we'll extract it. There's a library we're, we're going to need. And I'll explain that to you later. Okay. Excellent. Those are extracted. Let's extract the eye game. Okay. That's extracted. Go over here to the GUI graphics render no FPU LHA that you downloaded. Let's extract it too. All right, it's only two files, and the the one that we really need WHD load user. Let's extract that. Going to take a minute or so, or less. So one thing about WHD load I never really understood. All the documentation is you install it on Amiga, all the documentation is HTML. So to see it or to view it, you have to install a browser into your classic Amiga. And if you're not really planning on getting on the internet with it, um, it's kind of, you know, I wished it was just in a README file or a multi view file or a doc file or or something. I mean I'd have to in, I have to install a a browser such as AWeb or iBrowse or Voyager or something just so I could view these HTML. Well, we're emulating, we're WinUAE, so we can just flip over to the PC side and go to the website and view the documentation there ourselves. It's just, uh, feel, I feel bad for real Amiga users. It's like, I have a 12, I'm emulating a 1200 to play game. I mean, I've got a I've got a 1200 that has a small hard drive in it and I'm just really playing games and now I've got to put internet software on it. Okay, let's do a cleanup and let's update the drawer and you will have, you will see some new folders. And the first one that we need to get a hold of is MUI. We need to install MUI. Okay. Double click on the MUI drawer and find the install. Double click on it. And hit proceed with the install. Hit proceed. And 
this will install MUI, yes. Now, pause right here for a second. Don't let it default to one of your PC drives or one of the other drives. MUI likes to be on the root of the workbench. So click on your workbench drive, make sure it's workbench, and just hit proceed. Certain programs look for MUI to be in workbench. And install it. It's going to go pretty quick. Fairly quick. And just go ahead and click proceed. And English is my language. If you have another language, select your language and proceed. Uh, movie examples, sure, why not? And it's 100% done. There we go. Please reboot your machine before starting any movie applications. Yes, we will do that. And close this down. But for right now, we need to install a few more extra things. Okay, open up your workbench. And I want you to grab the iGames directory that we unarchived and drag it over and just drop it in the root of workbench. Just leave it or just drop it right there. Okay. The next thing we need to do is you need to go to your libraries directory, your libs directory, and open that up and navigate to that folder that we unarchived, the MU68X8. Now open that folder up and cursor down until you see the libs folder. Inside of that libs folder you will have several libraries. There is only one we need out of here. This is the 68000X0 library. Now you're probably saying, huh? You're probably scratching your head right now going, why do I need that? The reason you need that is because with the way 314 is done it's good to have a CPU library inside of your libs uh, it requires the 030 if you're running an 030 it requires the 040 the 060 uh, the 020 is covered by the workbench there's no problem there but what that 68x does is any program that calls for code that calls to a 68,000, a 6810, from an 020 and below, if it calls for it and makes direct code wanting to talk to that CPU, Amiga OS 314 will kick in and this library will take care of it. So if anything wants to act like it wants to run on a 68,000 processor with this library in there makes it a lot more compatible and, and allows it to run. Basic. So it's good to have it in there. Okay, let's install... Um, we've installed WHD load. We've moved the iGame. We've installed MUI. Okay... Oh, let's install the GUI graphics and render no FPU library. Let's double click on that. Let's do LHAX on that. Oh, I already did it. Okay, well, I guess we'll overwrite it. Ain't no big deal. We'll overwrite it. Two files. I guess I got lost a little bit there. Where did it go? Oh, there they are. They're on the root. Okay, I was looking for a folder. There they are. Let's put those in workbench. I almost confused myself there for a minute. Okay. Yeah, y'all probably laughing about that. Okay, let's move. Let's highlight these two graphics library. Let's move them over to the libs. And there we go. They're there. Okay. Now, let's do a strong reboot. Control Amiga Amiga. 
Control window, windows keys. All right, here we are, back. Nice. Okay. Now, let's open back up the same same directory where you stored everything at. And let's, wherever you, what, that folder that you downloaded everything to, Let's do a show all, and let's go to that directory, WHD load stuff. Now, when I downloaded my, text editor and GUI graphics, MCC and MCP, I put them in a different folder and did not put them in the same directory as my downloads. Yours should be in the directory of wherever you downloaded everything from the description will be it. Okay. Once you've done that, <clears throat> you need to take these files from those downloads and install them into your MUI, libs, and scroll up a little bit MUI. That is where all of the MCCs, MCPs, and MUIs sit for MUI. All of the files that MUI needs. Now these are requested by iGames. iGames is going to need these. So I want you to take and drop those right in there. Okay? Good to go on that. Now we should be able to, without it complaining, we should be able to launch the program iGame with no issues. And voila, there it is. Okay. We've installed WHD load. We've installed iGames. We've done uh, um, a library uh, tweak, I guess you could say. Uh, so... Let's 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 tidy up this the way this A1200 looks a little bit a little gloomy for me. So let's go to preferences and we're going to go to screen mode and let's change four colors to 256. Hit save. It's AGE chipset, so why not? Okay, there we go. Let's go to the same in preferences again. Let's go to the workbench icon. And quality of icons, fine, leave them at poor. Set magic workbench, uncheck no new icons. And border size, no borders. Hit save. And there we go, no borders around the icons. Yeehaw. Okay, see how we, uh, I must have a saved glow icon to my C directory. So my C directory on my PC side is a glow icon. Yeah, that's cool. Let's open back up Workbench and let's go into iGame. And in iGame, let's right click, hit icon, leave out. Let's leave that out on the desktop. Okay? We'll need it right there. Now I want you to double click on that. Bring up the iGame program. Go up to the top where it says Game Repositories. Okay. If you're familiar with iGames, iGame, you, you know where to go. Click on the little folder icon right here. And go to where you have your WHD load collection at. You're going to have to have some WHD load games. If you do not, Google's your friend. You will also need Kickstarts. You will need all of the kickstart files to launch for WHD load to work. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So let's go to where we keep our WHD load games. Now for demonstrative purposes, I put some games to test. Okay, 
and I put a variety of a few different types of games in here so I'm gonna click on that there's nothing else you need to do I put about you know 15 or so games in here and here's all the games that I've selected just hit OK hit add and they will pop up right there then close out the games repository hit scan repository and you're good go ahead and close out iGame then I want you to go back to where the directory where you stored all of the stuff to download and I want you to find the fo uh, find the folder that you've got all of your kickstarts now WHD load needs kickstarts from all the systems to work you can get them from Google you can search Google Google is your friend or you can go to Amiga Forever uh, website there'll be a link in the description and you can purchase one of their CDs and it has all of the kickstart files that you need to make kickstart that are compatible with WHD load okay so here's my kickstart and it, they'll have to go in your your workbench devs directory inside of here are all the kickstarts and they have to be named right they have to be capitalized right they have to be punctuated right uh, you know if I if I just change that capital A to a lowercase a that kickstart wouldn't work for some reason it's the way they did it in WHD load it's it's case sensitive and it's numeric sensitive and they have to be named just right now I have all of the kickstarts and if you get the kickstarts from the Amiga Forever CD make sure you have the ROM key that's very important okay now open up your workbench find your devs directory Let's slide this window up a little bit and grab your kickstarts make sure it's named kickstarts not kickstart okay grab that and drop that in your devs just drag it right over the top of it and it's going to copy them all there this is all the systems all the different kickstarts that WHD load calls on to for the games that that need a kickstart that required a kickstart and booted straight from disk and and looked at the kickstart and then launched the game okay kickstarts are all there now before we throw a test down I want you to hit F12 <clears throat> Go to F12, go back to the WinUAE control program, and I want you to go all the way down to display. Full screen, make sure it's still on. Make sure triple buffer is there. Okay, I want you to go down here to filters. Over here by default, select automatic scaling. Now, you're probably asking why. The reason is, is if you're like me and you have a 22-inch LCD monitor, you want to fill up all of the real estate. And you're probably going, ugh, yuck. You know, Amiga was in 4 point, uh, four by 3 Okay, fine. I don't mind it a little stretched out. Doesn't bother me. Uh, some people say, oh, it's too rough on the pixels and it makes look, the pixels look a little blowed out. Doesn't bother me none. I just back off the monitor a little bit. It's fine. I enjoy it. Um, but your own preference. If, if you don't like it, don't check mark that. Or don't turn on automatic scaling. But if you're wondering why the game does not fill your screen, go to this setting, hit automatic scaling, and hit OK. Now, let's go back to iGame. And let's try again. Let's see. Let's make sure something this stuff. Make sure it's working. So let's try something simple. Uh, hmm. Let's do our type. 
It's a good old classic. Now, whatever controller you like to use is entirely up to you with your PC and whatever game controller you have. I like using an Xbox 360 controller. It's wireless. I have a little wireless uh, adapter hooked up to my PC. I like it because all of the buttons can emulate a CD32. Um, it's good and er ergonomically fit for my big hands. Uh, you have a D-pad and you have the digital sticks. And I like, I like using the digital sticks on some games. So here we go. Let's give our type a try. Let's see if it loads. Hmm, we're not running. Okay. Well, maybe we need a reboot. Let's give it a reboot. I don't think we rebooted earlier. Okay, let's see if it works this time. It's strange. Hmm. Let's make sure that I installed WHD load. Thought I did, but let's make sure. No, we extracted it. We didn't install it. Sorry, I'm a goob. So, uh, yeah, let's install that WHD load. I got a little ahead of myself. Y'all are probably cracking up on that. I extracted it. I didn't install it. That would help. Okay, installation is now complete. Let's give that another try. How about that? Let's try that again. There we go. <clears throat> F10 to quit. Now, usually, you'll know right off the bat if this is running too fast. The sprites will be glitchy, and the music will be screechy and untolerable. Pretty good. Nice. And I waxed it. Okay. Let's jump on out of that. Well, that works. And and that I installed the uh, WHD load. So now here comes the part that some of y'all might not know with WHD load is that there's some settings that you can change to make things uh, games that are acting up um, streamline some things make them run smoother and it is in the S directory so let's go to workbench and let's do show all bring up the S directory and I want you to scroll until you see the WHD load prefs right there okay Double click on that and go to command. Uh, when it comes up, type in ed and enter. You will get the WHD load prefs. Now, these are global prefs, okay? So, this will affect every game. 
not every game will want this. And I will show you where you can change and what you can do for individual games. So, um, things like, uh, here's a good one, uh, chip no cache. Disables cache ability of chip RAM. Some old games, real old games, like 500 and 1,000 games, uh, there was nothing beyond regular memory, 512K or 1 meg or uh, 2 meg system, 2 mega chip, and that, that, was, that was all the system had to run. So uh, this, if you do not want cacheability of chip RAM. So if you don't want your chip RAM being cached into fast RAM, so in other words, anything that's calling for chip RAM, you don't want it to go to fast RAM, that's where you do it at. If uh, an old game says not enough chip RAM or chip RAM incompatible, you can untick this or take out the semicolon and that will fix that. Now this is global commands now, so what you do here affects everything. The number one, the number one fix for most things is no auto vec ignore unwanted auto vec interrupts so anything that calls for vector interrupts that could halt the system you can tell it to ignore so I do this by default this is the, the, the number one one I do and this fixes like well over 90 percent of any games refusing to load any games acting up, flittering, glitching, just acting like crap, that's the one to go to. Okay. This right here, no flush memory if you don't want the memory flushed after starting every game. I don't know about you, but I do. No filters, disables the audio filter if you want that on. Okay. This is another one. No write cache. Disables the write cache. Uh, with it off, that means the game has to go back and forth between what would be the floppies or the CD, so it's writing back and forth to memory, back and forth to memory. With this turned off, it sends the whole entire game, if you have enough memory, sends it all to memory, and basically loads the game out of memory. Why not, right? Okay, here is force NTSC and PAL for the games that are, uh, you can force it into NTSC or PAL to display to your liking. Most everything else is, uh, oh, yes, full chip. Full chip, saves, restore, complete chip memory. So we want to delete, we want to uncheck that. We want to turn that on. That means every time we get through launching a game, I get all my chip memory back. So it cleans it out and gives it all back. So if I started out launching and I've got 1.8 megabytes of chip memory when I get when I when it restarts I'll get it all back it doesn't get hung up there with little bits of data and stuff so let's leave that let's turn that one on okay nothing else is really needed to be needed uh, those are the main ones if you are on an 030 and above if you're using an 030 and above uncheck the MMU that way you can turn on the memory management unit okay you'd like that but we're 020 don't need it don't have it okay so to get out of here we hit escape X that saves the document and exits out of it okay boom we're done on that now if you want to go to the directory where you have your WHD load games wherever your archive is okay And I have a little directory, games to test. And you can go to those directories. And you can um, edit the tool types, which will save to the slaves. The slaves are the data that tells the game what to do. And um, like, for example, let's load up ViroCop. Let's bring it up, bring it up its directory, and see here's its icon. Now we want to click on it and then right click on it and hit information. 
you will see the slave, the viral cop, is the information that tells the game how it's going to execute. We can put commands in here from the w, uh, WHD load documentation. Uh, and the commands, we can, we can do those just like we did in the global. We can add those commands over here for individual games that are acting up. So we can put no no cache. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one for uh, if games start up kind of glitchy or they cut up got up uh, they start up kind of funky. This most of the time fits uh, fixes it right there. And you can also launch the games from those individual icons. My archive is so big of WHD load games. I have thousands upon thousands of them. I have to have a tool like iGames to manage all of them. So I use the iGame Launcher. In the iGame Launcher, you can also... go to game properties and you can change it over here too okay you can change those settings in here uh, if your screen resolution is big enough you it will show up right but are you can you can type it in right here no cash and you can hit OK and it'll save it so let's launch agony Thought we were going to launch Agony. I don't know why it's not launching. Xenon a launch. Everybody knows this game. pretty good okay we're dropping out of there with print screen let's go ahead and do a little reboot here all right we're back that quick spring up eye game now, here's a game that I always can guarantee, let's hope it runs, I guarantee it, it anytime I play it on any other system, it is going way too fast. So, this is a good test. This is a, this, this game goes all the way back to 500 and 1,000 days of only 512K and a 68,000. And let's see if, uh, see how well it runs. Good old Star Wars, 1988. <clears throat> F1 to enable mouse. I want to do mouse on this. Red five standing by. Now, if to tell that this game is running too fast, the TIE Fighters will... You, you can't you can't keep up with them and their the the shots that they send you can't shoot them down
Oh, pause it. I think I missed it. Well, anyway, that game's working. So nice. Now, let's see if Agony will go again. Agony didn't go. Hmm. Strange. Let me see. Let me look up the uh, game properties on that and see if uh, there isn't something out of whack. I didn't like that command I put in there. Is it okay? Let's try it again. There it goes. Gonna run now. Oh, Aaron displaying. Oh, I know what that is. Okay. Monitor's not installed. If you run into that problem, go into your dev storage of your workbench and move over all of the monitors, and I'll show you how to do that once I reboot because it hung up because of that. I know exactly the reason behind that. I forgot to mention that. Okay, let's go into Workbench. Let's fix that little problem real quick. Go into Storage, then go into Devs. All right, go into Monitors, and do select all take that and move that over to monitors into your devs just like that and close that down like that let's bring up iGame again let's see if agony don't launch now print screen to exit which is a little star on the windows keep uh oh, I've got to got to reboot now that I put those monitors in there. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Okay, here we are. We're back. Let's launch it again. Let's try one more time. If it doesn't do it this time, give up. Aha, uh -huh. got a little glitchy glitchy, but looks like it's settled down. Love the graphics in this game.
All right, there we go. Wow, that works out pretty good. Now here's another one. Here's another good test of a game that only wants to run on 500 settings. Let's check it out. Blood Money. 1989, Psygnosis. On any other system, this game goes way too fast. The music First, is way too fast. Minute. You can't understand it. Now, Psygnosis presents a DMA design game. There's, there's, there's a whole lot more coming. The biggest unanswered question is where there's, there's, is the button? There's a whole lot more coming. Running butter smooth. Running the way it was intended to. thought these graphics were awesome. If this game was running too fast, all of those little sprite orbs would be glitching, and these uh, little walker guys would be glitching. Their little sprites would be running faster than than uh, than normal. so fast they would be glitchy they're running butter smooth and I'm horrible so there you have it WHD load workbench 3.1 under WinUE 4.1 thank you for liking and subscribing my videos once again I'm sorry for this video this tutorial being late it was requested um, here you go. Thank you. Please check out our other channel, my other channel, Pints and Amiga Game Night, every Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Time, about 8 p.m. across the pond. Please like and subscribe that channel. We play a lot of these classic games that you saw me demonstrating. So uh, I hope this tutorial helped. And let's control F11. And let's call it a, let's call it a day. So thank you once again.